Blender Boids. Remove everything but leave the default queue. Rename the default queue to Boids, because this is going to be our emitter. Add a particle system. Adjust the number of emissions. Turn on Boids. Add intelligence to the Boyd system by defining some house rules. I added a follow rule, so now we need a leader to actually follow. Suzanne will be our leader, so now we have to tell the Boyd system to follow Suzanne. Run a test. Now I don't see anything, that's because the emitter cube is in the way. So let's hide it from our render and from the viewport. Ta-da! Boyd! Not very interesting though. So let's give the boids a longer lifetime. Now I'm going to be spawning birds and fish, so this is quite important. You don't want the fish and birds to disappear in the middle of the animation. I want the birds and fish to be there from the beginning of the animation and last all the way to the end, so I only want to spawn at the beginning. And I never want them to die, so they need to have a long lifetime. Let's add some more interesting movements to the boyd. Circling around Suzanne is not very fun. The boids are moving too close to each other, so we need to increase the personal space between each boy and slow them down for a less chaotic effect. That definitely slowed it down, but now the movements aren't very fluid. Let's increase the minimum speed so all the boids are moving more coherently. Now that's much better now. Let's try and have some fun and move the leader around. Okay, that didn't do much. Let's turn this up a notch and animate our leader. Let's add a keyframe to the left. And we can start to see the boys follow. And add a keyframe to the right. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. But Suzanne only moves once, so let's make this animation loop forever. We're gonna go into the graph editor and add a cycles modifier. This will make it loop forever. Only cycling the X movement, so we can disable the Y and the Z. Next, we head on to the modifiers tab and add a cycles modifier. Okay, now Suzanne looks like she's teleporting, so we need a much smoother loop animation. Let's add a keyframe to make Suzanne move back. Temporarily disable the cycling so we can actually see what we're doing. Insert a keyframe so Suzanne can move all the way back. Since Suzanne's going to end up where she started, we're just going to duplicate the first keyframe. Let's turn the cycling back on so the animation will loop infinitely. There she goes! So this is super procedural now. Suzanne's moving a little too fast and the boys are having a hard time keeping up. Let's slow down Suzanne by adjusting the keyframes on the timeline. Suzanne's definitely moving a lot slower, but the boys are still too slow. Suzanne is moving too far, so let's shorten the travel distance. The boys are finally keeping up, so it's finally time to adjust the speed on the boys. I'm going to increase the minimum speed of the boys so they all move a little bit faster. I'm also going to increase the angular velocity so they can turn faster as well. 
Voids are interesting by itself, and with a little bit of shading, you can make really nice renders. What else can we do with this? You can create an animated character that can then be copied to each void, and it'll look like a swarm of creatures flying about. But you need to use shape keys to make this work because boys don't allow characters with multiple objects to be instanced. 